Mr Dean Natale, you wish to move a motion to take note of answers? I do wish to move a motion to take note of an answer given by uh, Senator Cormann. Thank you. Uh, look, I could stand up here today and talk about the fact that this is a government that has campaigned on the issue of broken promises and indeed now, within a few short months, broken some fundamental commitments it made to the Australian community. Commitments not to cut health care, commitments to ensure that pensioners are looked after, commitments around the funding of our schools. Um, it is that sort of deceit and duplicity that gives all of us in this chamber a bad name. It is that sort of deceit and duplicity that means that politicians are no longer trusted members of the community. But if I'm being honest with myself, if I'm being absolutely honest, it's not the issue of the broken promise that I'm most aggrieved about. Um, indeed, if the coalition were to break a promise uh, on actually tackling climate change and getting serious about it, I'd welcome it. If they were to break their promise about getting a fair return from the minerals that belong to each and every one of us through a decent mining tax, I'd welcome it. So it's not just the broken promise here that is at issue. It is the fundamental assault on the foundations of Australian society, the foundations that make this country an egalitarian nation, a country founded on the spirit of the fair go, a country that says no matter how rich or poor you are, we're going to look after you, a country that says if you're unlucky enough to be born with a chronic disease through no fault of your own, we're going to look after you. A country that says if you've worked hard all of your life and contributed to Australian society, we're going to look after you. It is that assault to which I reserve my most stinging criticism. And when you look at what this government is proposing to do to the young people of Australia, what you have is a group of privileged, older white men who have benefited from a free education, who have ben benefited from universal health care, who have been the beneficiaries of a generous social safety net, saying, we had it good, but stuff you, you're not. You're not. We are going to ensure that our prosperity is going to be had off your shoulders. And that's what I'm most aggrieved about. How is it that a young person who finds himself unemployed is ineligible to get support for six months? What on earth are they supposed to do? How do they feed themselves? How do they pay their rent? How do they pay for transport? How do they clothe themselves? I simply don't get it. I understand there is a narrow, brutal, ideological worldview out there, but it is a worldview that affects the lives of young people right across the country. Over 700,000 people will be affected by the changes to Newstart. What happens to a young kid who lives in my hometown of Geelong, where in some parts we're talking about youth unemployment of almost 20 per cent, who has been looking for a job? who's struggling, and now they haven't got access to any social support to ensure that they can pay their rent and feed themselves. It is disgraceful. What about the young person who's unemployed now, a young woman who uh, needs to go and see the doctor, get her oral contraceptive, get her asthma medication, have a blood test? There's now a co-payment for the doctor's visit, a co-payment to see the pathologist, a co-payment for each of those medicines and no access to social support. What is that person supposed to do in that setting? You see, this is a government that has issued a blueprint for a dog-eat-dog -dog society. And it talks about lifters and leaners, but what it needs to be thinking about is whether we are a country that is committed to the fair go, whether in fact we want to be a country that is cruel or compassionate, a country that is cruel or caring. That is what is at question here, 
and the Greens will fight to our last breath to ensure that it is those people that we look after. Thank you, Senator Dina